Steve Bannon is the White House chief strategist, but even that title may not do justice to his influence in the West Wing. He's driving decisions on every piece of President Trump's agenda, domestic and foreign, including the president's immigration order and travel ban that sparked a global backlash. But it's his elevation to a permanent spot on the National Security Council that is now outraging even many Republicans, who question why he has a seat alongside the Secretary of State and Defense Secretary in the inner sanctum of national security. The president said in a weekend memo, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the director of national intelligence will no longer have a standing seat on the group known as the Principles Committee. Former Defense Secretary Robert Gates, who has served eight presidents, said it was an unprecedented move. I think uh, pushing them out of the National Security Council meetings, except when their specific uh, issues are at stake, is a big mistake. I think that they both bring a perspective and, and judgment and experience to bear that every president, whether they like it or not, finds useful. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer brushed aside criticism as utter nonsense. He drew a comparison to David Axelrod, a senior advisor to President Obama, who attended some national security meetings. Yet Axelrod never had a permanent seat on the council. This administration is trying to make sure that we don't hide things uh, and wait for them to count after the fact. Uh, so it, it recognizes the role that he's going to play. But Steve's not going to be in every meeting. Like, like Axelrod, he'll come in and out. Bannon is unfazed by the controversy. In fact, a person close to him tells CNN he thrives on it. Bannon sees his role as disrupting the establishment, Republicans included, and putting his ideological imprint on Trump's presidency. Now I want to go to one of our Breitbart uh, posse. Uh, he calls himself a nationalist uh, who says Trump could create a new populist movement. Texas. This whole uh, movement is really the top first inning. He joined Trump's team last August, taking leave from leading the conservative Breitbart News website. At 62, he has one of the loudest voices in the White House, who is rarely heard or seen outside, except now at the president's side. He's a formal naval officer, Goldman Sachs investment banker, and Hollywood movie producer, who drew attention of conservatives with this Ronald Reagan film in 2004. In the traditional motion picture story, the villains are usually defeated. The ending is a happy one. I can make no such promise for the picture you're about to watch. Last week, Bannon told the New York Times, the media here is the opposition party. One day later, the president echoed the same sentiment to the Christian Broadcasting Network. I think the media is the opposition party in many ways.